As the founder of Mongolian Empire, Genghis Khan established the largest empire in history. There were many positive impacts during his reign, such as religious freedom, trading, and cultural exchange. But he was also criticized for being brutal. As a cult leader, Charles Manson made his passionate followers believe that he was Jesus and predicted Helter Skelter, a race war, which scared his followers so bad that they committed murder. These two figures were extremely charismatic, but they possessed significantly negative traits too. So what is a leader and what determines the leader? Do you believe leaders are born or raised? Today we're going to introduce the perspective and research on the trait theory of leadership, which claims certain characteristics people were born with makes them the leader. As one of the traditional approaches, the trait theory assumes certain inherited traits and characteristics that people are born with contribute to becoming a leader. There are a lot of criticism on this approach, so in this video we try to focus on evidence-based research results. There's a robust finding that tall men are more likely to attain leadership positions and achieve career success. Think about the US presidents. Most are pretty tall. US presidents' average height is 180 centimeters. There are some research reviews the mechanisms. For instance, statistically height is associated with intelligence, which were both impacted by childhood nutrition. Height is also related to perceptions of persuasion, social esteem, and self-esteem, which then leads to better performance. One study also investigated that facial cues of height contribute to leadership perceptions. First, they found faces appearing to belong to taller people were rated as better leaders. Then in another experiment, participants were asked to manually manipulate perceived height in faces in order to maximize perceived leadership ability. Participants increased face shape by 45%, confirmed the relationship between perceived height and leadership ability in faces. That leads to the second topic for today, the appearance. Research about voters' choice are heavily based on appearance. Please look at the next two pairs of faces and let me know who is more attractive, more competent, the face A or face B. Ready? Pair one. Ready? Pair two. Okay, was your choice face A in the first pair and face B in the second pair? As most participants made the similar choice that these two faces are more competent, more attractive, and less baby-faced, the split second glance is also enough for voters to make up their mind in an election. This relationship between appearance and voting has been found not only in U.S. political elections like Senate and House of Representatives, it has also been found in many other countries such as Japan, Mexico, and Australia. But do voters get it right? The appearance obviously can help a candidate win an election. In academic, we call it leader emergence. But can uh, the appearance predict future leader effectiveness? Results indicate it not really. But another factor can predict both emergence and effectiveness. That is the personality traits. A meta-analysis revealed the strong correlation between Big Five personality and leadership. For instance, neuroticism is negatively related to leadership, and extroversion is positively related to leadership, and it is the most consistent across all study settings and leader criteria, no matter its leader emergence or leader effectiveness. Researchers have also examined other factors like intelligence, self-confidence, self-efficacy, self-esteem, integrity, and genetic factors. For genetic factors, researchers mostly use twins for the studies, and the genetic factors impact other functions like cognitive, personality, physical capacities, etc. to further impact the leadership. There's also new approaches for genetic factors, that is studying the molecular genetics. For instance, researchers found the dopamine receptor gene DRD4 is related to job satisfaction and pay. So what do you think? Have you found common characters from your leaders? 
What do you think about the problem to focus only on the trade perspective? What about the effects from the situations and the interactions with the followers? Literatures on situations and followers will be discussed in the future. Thank you for watching.